friends, this video on life processes part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Of oxygen rich blood flow actually enables the mammals and birds to maintain high activity levels. So now that we have spoken about, so we have roughly got an idea about how the blood circulation takes place in human beings. But in human circulatory system, other than just the flow, there are many other things which are involved. The one more most important thing is the blood vessels. What is the significance of the blood vessels? Why do we include blood in blood vessels? And what are the different types of blood vessels? So basically, we will talk about three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins and capillaries. So we will see what, why do we have these three types of vessels and what do they actually do. So now, looking at the picture which I shown you in the previous slide, I mean how the circulation takes place, there has to be some carrier which will actually carry the oxygenated blood or who will actually carry the deoxygenated blood. So those carriers are nothing but these blood vessels. So let us start our discussion with arteries. Arteries carry blood from heart to different body parts. So from heart, whichever blood flows out, that is carried by the arteries. They always carry oxygenated blood. Now in order to understand this, let us quickly plot the same diagram because it will help you to understand it in a better way. So this is the body, this is the lungs and this is the heart which has four chambers. This is the right auricle, this is the left auricle, this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle. So what did we see? We saw, saw that the oxygenated blood from lungs comes to the left auricle, then it goes to the left ventricle, from left ventricle it goes to the different parts of the body. And the deoxygenated blood from the body comes into the right auricle, from right auricle it goes into the right ventricle, from right ventricle it goes back to the lungs. So this is the oxygenated blood and this is the deoxygenated blood. So this is how the circulation happens. Now who is actually going to carry these blood, these oxygenated blood from lungs to the left auricle or this deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs, who is actually going to carry them? They are going to be carried by the blood vessels. So artery is the one which carries the blood from heart to different body parts. So if you see from heart to different body parts, this oxygenated blood goes from heart to different body parts. So this is this blood is always oxygenated. So the blood which goes from heart to the body. So this is the only blood which is going from heart to the body and it is oxygenated. Therefore the arteries will carry this oxygenated blood. So this oxygenated blood is carried by the arteries from heart to different body parts. They have thick elastic walls. Why do they have thick walls? Because blood flows from the heart which is a pump. Therefore the blood flows under very high pressure. So they should have thick walls. If they have very thin walls due to the very high pressure of the blood, the walls may rupture and the blood vessel can also get damaged. So that is why they have very thick walls because the blood which is flowing through them is coming from the pump. There is one exception to the artery that is pulmonary artery. There is a pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs. So this is an exception. All arteries will carry oxygenated blood and all arteries will carry blood from heart to different body parts. The only exception is pulmonary artery. It will carry deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs. So if you see the deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to the lungs, this is the deoxygenated blood from right ventricle to lungs and this is carried by the pulmonary artery. See in the previous definition I told that arteries carry blood from heart to different body parts. So from heart to different part body parts but lung is also a part of the body. But to the lungs, from heart to lungs, the blood which is getting carried is deoxygenated. So this deoxygenated blood is carried by the pulmonary artery. That means all arteries will carry oxygenated blood from heart to lungs. Only pulmonary artery will carry deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs. So if you remember this block diagram of circulation, it will be very easy for you to remember things. So now you understand what are arteries? Okay. Let us now talk about veins. What are veins? They carry blood from different parts of the body to heart. So the same picture if I draw it here, if this is the body, 
This is the heart with four chambers that is right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle and left ventricle and these is the lungs. So the lungs will send in oxygenated blood here, right left auricle will send it to left ventricle and left ventricle will send it to different parts of the body. Now from body deoxygenated blood will come to the right auricle, right auricle will send it to right ventricle and right ventricle will send it to different parts of the body. This is the deoxygenated blood. So in the previous slide we saw that this oxygenated blood from heart to body is carried by the arteries. This deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs is carried by the pulmonary artery. Now veins will carry blood from different body parts to heart. That means different body parts to heart. So this is going to carry deoxygenated blood. So these veins are going to carry deoxygenated blood. They have thin elastic walls. Why do we have thin elastic walls? Because in this case, the blood is not flowing from the pump. The blood is flowing from different parts of the body. So they are comparatively at a lower pressure. As a result, thin walls will also do. In veins, there are valves which are present. What are valves? Valves are something that regulates or controls the flow of a fluid. So valves actually regulate the flow of a fluid. So you can consider valve as doors. Like how, why do we have doors in our houses? So that the doors can control the entry and exit of people. When the door is open, people are allowed to enter. When the door is closed, people are not allowed to enter. So we can decide as per our own choice whether we want people to enter in or we do not want them to enter. So similarly, there are valves which can be opened or which can be closed. So when the valves are closed, blood flow cannot take place. But when the valves are open, blood flow will take place. So inside the veins, valves are present. Why are valves present? in order to prevent the backflow of deoxygenated blood. See, because this is deoxygenated blood, which is a bad blood. We do not want it to be inside our body. So we do not want that this deoxygenated blood by any chance starts flowing back. Because in case of the oxygenated blood, it was flowing from the heart. So it was flowing under very high pressure. So there is no chance of it flowing back. But in this case, the blood is flowing at relatively lesser pressure. So there are chances that the deoxygenated blood might flow back. So in order to prevent the backflow of deoxygenated blood, there are valves present inside the veins. So if you keep the valves closed, there is no chance that the blood can flow in the backward direction. So even for the veins, there is an exception that is pulmonary vein. Like all veins carry deoxygenated blood, but pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left auricle. That means this is done by the pulmonary vein. So whenever somebody asks you what is artery, artery are those blood vessels which carry oxygenated blood. Only exception is pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood. Similarly, veins are those blood vessels which carry deoxygenated blood. Exception is pulmonary vein which carry oxygenated blood. Clear? Okay. So let us look at the third blood vessel that is the capillaries. Now the arteries which we are talking about, these arteries branch out to form smaller tube-like structures known as arterioles. These arterioles further branch out to form even thinner uh, structures called capillaries and these capillaries are the thinnest and they are the smallest blood vessel. They will again join together to form venules which in turn will join together to form veins and the veins will join together to form vena cava. So here you can look at this picture. This is an artery, this red line. Why is it red in color? Because the arteries carry oxygenated blood. And the oxygenated blood is denoted by red. Now if you see here, the arteries branch out to form the arterioles. So here you can see so many arterioles. Right? Now these arterioles will further branch out to form the capillaries. So here you can see very thin tube-like structures. These are the capillaries. Now the capillaries again join together to form the venules. So here you can see the capillaries again come back and join together and form venule. Venules again form a vein. 
so this is the vein the blue structure and many such veins join together to form vena cava so this is how the structure of blood vessels are right so the capillaries have extremely thin walls why because capillaries are the main sites for exchange of gases as i have already mentioned in case of respiration also the main exchange of gases take place between the alveoli and the capillaries that is why alveoli have extremely thin walls and the capillaries also have extremely thin walls so that the diffusion can take place easily the exchange of gases nutrients or excretory products everything become easier if the cell if the walls are thin right so we covered the different blood vessels arteries veins and capillaries let us now quickly differentiate between the arteries and veins both of them are blood vessels but when we talk of arteries they carry blood from heart to the body whereas for veins they carry it just the opposite from different parts of the body to the heart arteries carry oxygenated blood except one artery which is pulmonary artery which carries deoxygenated blood all veins carry deoxygenated blood except one that is pulmonary vein in arteries blood flow with higher pressure why because arteries carry blood from heart to different parts of the body and heart is the pump so it is actually carrying blood from the pump so the blood is at a higher pressure so the flow is with higher pressure in veins the blood flow with comparatively lower pressure because of this difference in pressure the arteries have thick elastic walls because since the blood is flowing with very high pressure so the vessel inside which the blood is flowing should be strong enough otherwise the vessel might rupture so they are provided with thick elastic walls whereas the veins are provided with thin less elastic walls in arteries there are no valves because since here again the since the blood is flowing with higher pressure so there are less chances that the blood will flow in the backward direction whereas in case of veins valves are present because since the blood is flowing with a comparatively lower pressure so there are chances that it might back flow so in order to prevent that back flow valves are present inside veins so these are some of the important differences between arteries and veins thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.